Okay, Clive Williams, here I am, psychologist, ready to talk about a hero's journey. In 1949, a man by the name of Joe Campbell wrote a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces. He read legends, folk tales, story, uh, fairy tales, across the globe, across the cultures, across time, yeah? And he came forth with this idea that, he wasn't the first with this idea, but he said, it's all the same story, yeah? And the story is, that when a problem arises in your life, the heroine, the hero, is somehow separated from their old life. Yeah? Once they're separated, there's all these tests to solve the problem. The tests get harder, not easier. Some of the tests are life-threatening. You eventually kind of get to the last and the hardest test, and then somehow you kind of muddle your way through. It doesn't go the way that you planned, but the problem's resolved, but the person is changed. In 1988, 39 years later, his book hit the New York bestseller list. So, my book's coming out, I'm hoping to wait 39 years. <laughs> so, in 1990, I came across Joe Campbell and I thought, I was really intrigued by the guy, but I couldn't get my head around this just one story. I just did not believe that for a minute. So, I took to the story of a new best, my mother's favourite movie. And it's a story about a woman who's going to become a nun, except she gets separated. There's a problem. There's lots of tests. The tests get more difficult, yeah? Uh, she muddles her way through. Nothing goes to the, what, the way that she planned. The problem's resolved, and she's quite changed at the end. So I thought, okay, it works there. I'll, I'll go for something a bit more contemporary. So I thought, okay, Matrix, back at the time, this was the movie. Um, it's a story of a young man who doesn't quite like his life. Um, he gets separated, there's a problem, there's lots of tests, the tests keep getting harder and harder, some of the tests are life-threatening. He eventually muddles his way through, nothing goes the way he planned, but the problem's resolved and he's changed at the end of it. I'm a psychologist, I'm in the business of change, so this kind of got my interest. So then I started looking everywhere, yeah? And time and time and time again, there's a story of you have this job, they give you this other job to hunt down a kind of a serial killer. Yeah? You're in the village one day, someone kills your partner, next minute you're off fighting a war. One day you're at home with your parents, the next minute you're separated. Separation is the beginning of a problem. Problems require tests. The tests get harder, not easier. Some of them are life-threatening. It never goes to plan. Somehow the problem's resolved and you're changed at the end. So I thought, well, maybe it's just American movies. I need to kind of broaden my... So I went to Shakespeare, I went to Dickens, and I kept finding the hero's journey. Yeah? Wherever I was looking. Somehow there's a problem. It separates you from part or all of your old life. There's test after test after test. The test gets hard. Nothing goes to plan. Some of the tests feel or are life-threatening. You muddle your way through to the end. The problem's resolved and the person is changed. So sister separated from sister. Um, Marines separated from planet Earth, sent to a, a, another planet. Um, a piglet separated from mum. Um, you know, you're a Roman general one day, the next minute you're a slave. Wherever you look, one day you're in the shy, the next minute you have to separate. There's lots of separation and test, test, test. The tests you don't want to do, you don't know how to do it, you wish someone else was doing it, make it harder, you have to risk life and limb. But somehow the problem's resolved and you're changed. I kept looking, more and more examples. So I kept thinking, if this is pre-psychology, if this story's being told, for as long as we've had stories, what's so important about this story? And then I thought, I don't have time for that. Someone gave me a lot of money to write a play. Now, I'd never written a play before, so that was a problem. So there was lots of tests, tests, and then the tests got harder, yeah? And some of those tests felt life threatening, a bit like this test now. And then I sort of muddled my way through to the end. I eventually got there, the problem was resolved, and I think I was changed at the end of it. So, <laughs> Then I started to think, hang on a tick, is the hero's journey, is that structure happening in my life? So I thought, that can't be right. When, you know, there were times in my life when I was separated, and I, 
you know, I lived at that place and I would separate and I'd move there. I lived in Australia, then I moved to London, and then kind of I was in that relationship and I separated there. And each time there was a separation, there was a problem, then there was tests, and the test got harder. And I didn't want to do the test, and I didn't know how to do the test, but somehow I muddled my way through. The problem was resolved, and I was kind of changed in the process. So I started to think of my life as a hero's journey. There's 12 stages. I don't have time for the 12 stages. But what do heroes do? They're often forced to change. And they're forced to do things they don't want to do, don't know how to do, would rather someone else do. And I think it's the tests that teach you the skills that you need for your life. All those tests you don't want, you might need. And they're designed to teach you the opposite of what you've been doing. Yeah, so if somebody says, this is your life, yeah? Your life is prescribed for you, no choice. Now that's a problem. You take yourself to the end of the ship, you think I'm gonna throw myself off the end of the ship, yeah? Then there's lots and lots and lots and lots of tests to resolve that problem. A lot of them are life-threatening. Somehow you muddle your way through, nothing goes to plan, the problem's resolved, but you're changed at the end. You started off obedient, and now you're disobedient. You think your home life sucks, yeah? You think, it's over there, somewhere over the rainbow. I'm going that way. So it's a problem. So there's test after test after test after test. The tests get harder, yeah? You don't want to do them. You don't know how to do them. You eventually muddle way through. You get to the end. The problem's resolved, but you're kind of changed. You used to be this person wanting to leave home. Now you can't, you can't wait to get back. You've lived your life kind of being a me, me, me person, you know? Self-obsessed, kind of self-absorbed. That's a problem. It's not a very happy life. Test after test after test, the tests are getting harder. Some of feel life threatening. You eventually get through to the end, the problem's resolved, and you're changed. So I thought, well, what am I doing in my life when there's a problem? So I was very good at avoiding. Yeah, so if it's a difficult topic, I would just avoid it. Difficult people, uh, just avoid it. Difficult issues, I would avoid it. And so then I thought, well, what else do I do? And I thought, actually, I, I blame a lot. Yeah? Um, if I couldn't avoid people, I would blame. Not my fault, yours. I did the right thing, you did the wrong thing. I'm the good guy, you're the bad guy. So I thought, well, if the problem has the tests, and the tests require me to do the opposite, then I'll have to, it makes me anxious just to think about it, I'll have to confront, yeah? And then, uh, instead of blaming, I'll have to ask, well, what am I gonna do about it? I'm gonna have to be responsible. So that kind of drove me a bit crazy for a while, and then I started thinking, Clive, you're a trained psychologist. You're trying to live your life like a hero's journey. So it was kind of a bit weird. But I stuck with it and I realized that in avoiding, I had effectively silenced myself. Turns out there was a lot that I wanted to say to certain people on certain days and I was just too scared to say it. It turns out when I avoided all that, all, all those things in my life, that I'd kind of retracted from life, yeah? There was less and less people in it. I'd made this nice little safe place but it was kind of a bit lonely and kind of a bit boring, yeah? So, and then I realized the best thing of all, that when you do kind of confront things and you fail a lot, 20, 30, 40 times, on the 41st time, you begin to succeed, yeah? Your hit rate goes up. So I was learning the opposite skills through tests and I started to realize I had the life that I was actually wanting to have. It wasn't the life that I thought I was going to have. And it certainly wasn't the life that other people thought I should have. I was happier. I was more at home in my own skin. I think I was a little wiser, a little sadder, a lot more fulfilled. Now, though, I had enemies, yeah? But I also had allies. So what did I do about this? Like all good psychologists, I only do things when there's evidence. I had no evidence, so I kept quiet. Absolutely shtum, yeah? And I did that for about 13, 14, 15 years. I, I can't really remember exactly. And then I realized, Clive, this is ridiculous. You're living life as a hero's journey. It seems to be kind of working. Let's see if I can find some of that evidence with clients. And it turns out that the things that cause you problems that separate you start very early in life. You're at home and they separate you and they put you in a classroom. And the tests start pretty soon, yeah? And the tests get harder and you muddle your way through. It never goes to plan. And you kind of, the problem's resolved and you're changed at the end. And then they make, they repeat that again and they put you in another classroom. Separation, problem, tests, muddle your way through. Some feel life threatening. It's resolved, you're changed at the end. It turns out that that keeps processing and then you leave home. 
there's a problem, there's tests. And then you decide that you want to be in a relationship. Well, that, that's difficult. Yeah, so there's more tests, there's more problems. All the time, the things that we kind of make problems in our lives are often separation. So what I said to clients then, we'll, we'll take into account like, what the separation is, what the problem is. But let's look at the things that you don't want to do as tests. So what have you been doing? And let's remember that the tests are there to teach you how to learn the opposite. So what I'm trying to say to people and what I think I'm finding is that there's a bit of a mud map for life. And if you don't know what that word means, it's a bit of a guide, yeah? And it's been there all the time. It's in the hero's journey. These 12 stages in the hero's journey can kind of map out your life. And now I'm, I'm getting pretty good at mapping with clients where they are in that hero's journey. And because of the work of Joe Campbell and people like Crystal Vogler, I can tell people what happens at that stage, what they can expect, what they might need to do, what they might incur along the way. But they're going to have to do things that they don't want to do, don't know how to do, and they will be forced to do. Yeah? But that's going to solve the problem. They're going to be changed in the process. So for anybody here is out there, just start having a look at some other myths and the underlying structure, yeah? Have a look at the work of Chris Vogler and perhaps you might look online for my book which is coming out in January in 2016. And um, have a look at how you might apply those various stages to your own life. Because there is this mud map, it's not exact, but it's going to point you as a bit of a compass where you need to go. And you won't like it. Things aren't going to go to plan. The tests are going to get harder. But the problem will be resolved but you need to be changed. Thank you. The Hero Roundtables are the global events that ask the question, what is a hero? You've just seen one hero talk. To find more and join the conversation, visit our website or social media.